Hello, this is Vampire here to elaborate more on the cheese grater technique and uh, also go into a little bit of its origins. Okay, so first of all, what is it? Uh, it could be done with the angles of attack or the heaven six. And the idea here is the opponent's face. You're targeting the face, all the sensitive area. So eyes, nose and ears, it's all game. You're trying to avoid the mouth, of course, but pretty much the face. And you're just going to grind your fist, your palm, your forearm, and your elbow right onto that area. Okay, it's a continuous grind. That's what you're doing. Now, um, the pattern that we're using here comes from, once again, the angles of attack and the heaven six techniques. So it's something that you should have a lot of mileage in. It's something that we practice with all the time with the sticks. So the angles of attack, one, two, three, four, and five, and of course the heaven six, right? So this is the motion that we're doing, you know, right onto their face, okay? Let's think about that. Let's think about it. A, it's, it's really good because it's a motion that's, you practice all day long, so it's in your muscle memory, right? B, when you hear about self-defense, a lot of instructors teach in a no-nonsense situation, attack the eyes. That's, that's what they tell you, right? Attack the eyes. But when they say attack the eyes and you go, yeah, okay, that sounds effective, right? I, I want something that I could take out my opponent, a place where they cannot train, they cannot protect, right? So no matter how big, strong they are, the eyes are still going to be a weak spot, no matter what, even in the animal kingdom. In fact, I've heard of uh, at least one shark attack case where the person was attacked by a shark and he squeezed the eyes and the shark let him go. So at least in one situation, you know, a guy survived a freaking shark attack by attacking the eyes. Okay, so I can understand that. Attacking the eyes, very, very effective, very brutal and vicious technique. Now, it's easy to understand that, but then can you use it in a real life situation? In a real life situation, you go, yeah, 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 of course. I mean, I'm on the street and this dude suddenly attacks me and I don't know this guy. Of course, yeah, I'll attack him right in the eyes. It's easy to say that. It's very, very easy to say that. If you, That means that you're going from zero to 100% vicious attack, okay? If you can do that where this guy came unexpected and, and you know was, was attacking you and you just went from zero to that, you're probably bipolar, okay? For the average person, it's the switch is, is not there. You're, A, you're probably gonna be in shock going, whoa, what's going on? Is this really happening to me? And then B is like, why is this guy doing this? You know, um, what the heck? And then you might go, well, attack the eyes. But then you, you start thinking, well, is that too much? Am I going to blind this guy for life? Where is this going? And in the meantime, you're being attacked and you're trying to go, is, is this the right time to use it or what? There's a lot of conflict and confusion going on there. And if that's the case, then it's useless, right? It, it probably won't come out well. And by the time you do go for it, you know, it's a half, half-assed attempt and, and it's not really going to help you out that well if you do it that, that way in that kind of circumstance. So to go from zero to 100%, you know, attacking the guy's eyes, grabbing his head, and put your finger in and scoop it out kind of thing, you know, that's not easy to do. It's taught. It's taught frequently. I see it all the time. And it's... I don't want to be walking around the streets like that going, you know, <sighs> you know, anyone that messes with me, man, I'm just going to take out their eyes right away. I, I don't want to be that way either. Psychologically, I don't think it's healthy. So we go back to the cheese grater technique, and this is the brilliance of the move. When I do this, my fingers are not going underneath the eyelid. It can, but I'm not, okay? I'm just doing the angles of attack, which I can do all day long. I'm doing a heaven six, which I can do all day, all day long, constant pressure on the eyes from over the eyelids. So there's not direct contact, even if, you know, no matter how hard I'm pressing, 
There's not direct contact to his eyeball. Okay, I'm working from on top of his eyelid. So chances of him losing an eye from this is small. It's much, much safer, but I'm still attacking a very sensitive area, so it's still very, very effective, but without the nasty consequences. So it's much, much easier for me to do this and go, oh man, am I gonna blind him for life? You don't have to worry about that so much, you know? So that is the brilliance of the technique. So now let me go into the origins, okay? Where did this technique come from? Um, all right, so I learned the Heaven Six as a very versatile technique in the early 90s when I was training artists, right? And then sometime later on in college, I started realizing that in the Filipino martial arts, Arnis, Kali, and uh, Eskrima, with those three, which is the same thing, that there's different ways to do it. I met a guy in college, and I trained with him, who actually specialized in very close range and also empty hand. He trained with the sticks, but his specialty was empty hand, close range, Eskrima Kali. That's what he did, okay? And then I remember reading, I don't know if it was Black Belt Magazine at the time, but I was reading about, uh, I think, I, I don't even remember, Eskrima Kali Arnis, but it was a far away style, long range style of fighting with the sticks, right? And then when I actually sparred somebody with the sticks, that's where it felt very natural for me. So the close range, yeah, I mean, it happens. Even if you don't want it to, it happens, so you need to have close range techniques. Okay, I get it. And then long range was like, yeah, this is where I wanna be. So that made total sense to me. What I personally learned was pretty much medium range uh, usage. And honestly, I didn't understand how much I didn't understand about medium range. But I learned those three ranges by the time I was in college. I was, I was learning about it, I was experiencing them in the Filipino martial arts. Okay, so then somewhere in my head, I, I got it that the Heaven Six then should be able to be done in all three of those ranges. I mean, um, for me, there's long range, medium range, close range, and then ground range. So there's actually four ranges. So in my mind, it was like, I should be able to do the Heaven Six in all four ranges, all right, because it's a versatile Swiss Army knife of martial arts techniques. Okay, so in long range, how do I do it? Well, when the person attacks, I'm attacking their arm. Okay, so that works. Okay, that's easy to understand. I get it. In medium range, how do I use the Heaven Six? Well, there's a world famous uh, Filipino martial arts guy on YouTube, and he said, if I know this guy has a knife, and I know they're going to use it on me, then I'm not gonna sit around and wait. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my knife and attack preemptively. That's what this person said. That makes total sense to me. I'm not saying that that's the way you should go or that I would do that, but I understand what he's saying, okay? So that's medium range, I get that. With the knife, it's, it's great. Okay, so now close range. In close range, how do I use the heaven six? And it was pretty much like, okay, that comes from knife work. So in knife work, what do we do in close range? Well, it's the reverse grip, or should we say the ice pick grip. So then, empty hand-wise, that translates to hammer fist, okay? So I'm doing hammer fist here, and I was like, that's very limiting. Very, very limiting. There, there's got to be more. And to be honest, that's all I could figure out. So for a long time, that's all I did. Heaven six in close range was hammer fist for me. And because it was so lacking, um, what I did was I looked into World War II combatives, CQC, close quarters combat, and what they taught was the, right here, the chin jab into a tiger's claw into the eyes. So that was the kind of techniques that I was using once I got into CQC. Of course, the Muay Thai elbow and knees, and then in JKD you had the headbutt, of course. Of course I did that too, but what do you do if you face the guy who's better better than you were at Muay Thai kickboxing. So then that's where the CQC technique came. But that wasn't satisfying for me because I knew that Filipino martial arts had more to offer. So I was thinking, and that's when I, I was discovering the wedge technique. When I saw the Filipino martial arts masters over in the Philippines, they, for empty hand, they were using a lot of palm strikes, right? And then for me, before I saw that stuff, when I went to empty hand, 
I used fist, of course, but what was even better was the chop. Why? Because of the blade. We ch I train with the blades. There's a lot of Filipino martial arts people that focus on knife work and blade work. So then it just made sense. So with a short weapon like my hand, rather than a stick, I'm going to use the chop. The chop is kind of a blade right here. So this, this made sense. But then when I saw the Filipino masters on video, what they were doing was open hand. So it, was, it wasn't the chop, but it was, a, it was a palm strike like this, or more like a slap. So then I was like, well, why don't I combine the two, which is kind of like what I do, which I train both. And as I was training both, I was using both. I was using palm strikes and chops. And then somewhere along the lines, I discovered the wedge, which is right in between. It's a combination between a chop and a palm strike. You, you put it together, mix it together, and, and the baby is the wedge. And once you understand the wedge and you start using it, it's kind of like a chop at an angle, but it's kind of like a palm strike. When you start doing that, then you see that the forearm comes into play and the elbow can come into play too. So that one move, the wedge, linked the palm strike, the chop, the forearm strike, and the elbow all together, right? So once you start doing the heaven six now, instead of just doing the hammer fist here, I started using the wedge. It was all, that's the transition. That's what made it to where, okay, now I can grind. I can grind my forearm, my elbow, my whole hand into the opponent. And that's when it made sense to me. This is how we use, use it in close range. And the grinding part, real quick, in finishing, let me talk about the, the grinding was uh, when back in college, when I was also training in grappling, I went to a school, it was a very rough and tough school, it was a fight school. This was when MMA wasn't exactly MMA yet, it was still more like NHB and transitioning into MMA. And uh, these guys, they actually fought in a nightclub where the dance floor was converted into a ring where they just put ropes and there were tires and s something like that. And they fought there. So I was part of that team. Um, and in that team, one dude, one of the top guys was absent. And the teacher's like, okay, what do you guys want to learn today? And, and one guy said, well, you know, the guy that's not here today, he grinds a lot. And, and uh, how do we deal with that? And he was like, he grinds because he's stupid. You know, none of the high level guys grind. And we're like, okay, that might be true, but we're all having a very tough time with this guy. We're, we're all having a very tough time dealing with the grinding. So then he was like, well, if he grinds you, grind him back. And we're like, okay, that makes sense, but we don't know how to grind. So he was like, all right, today's class is gonna be all, all about grinding. And he showed us how to grind it was elbows, forearms, it was just brutal. Everybody was screaming in the class. Um, and the instructor was a little bit sadistic for sure. It was extremely painful, but stuck in my mind. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I am grinding using the heaven six techniques, using the wedge technique, all that put together with the grinding that I learned from grappling, and suddenly now we have the cheese grater. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and take care, folks.